Hey there. So YouTube is at it again. And in an effort to dance the dance for our digital overlords so information can actually reach people, I have had to re-edit our most recent episode into two videos. This one that is a primer for plant nutrition, and another one that goes over how I feed my plants in veg. Hopefully I can figure out a way to keep our overlords happy. New content is coming this Friday, and now onto the video. So what are the essential requirements for plant life? Light, water, and nutrients. Over 95% of the dry weight of a flowering plant is made up of just three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which are taken from the air and water. The remaining 5% of the dry weight comes from chemicals absorbed from the soil. Roots absorb a variety of the chemicals present in their surroundings, but only 14 of these elements are necessary for plant growth. In this video, we're gonna dive into the complex world of feeding your plants so that you are primed for growing success. I'm Dr. Judd with Green Cert MD, and let's get into it. The topic of plant nutrition is immense, and truthfully, it is such an expansive topic that there is no reasonable way to cover the breadth and depth of the topic in one, 10, 20, or who knows how many videos. This is a topic in which people have PhDs, and I wanna state up front that I am not one of them. What I hope to do in this video, however, is pare down this topic to provide a cursory overview for the novice grower so you can be better equipped to make the best choices for your situation when looking at products at your local grow store. We're gonna discuss the basics of what a plant needs, review the main methods used to provide for these needs, and review step-by-step -step my process for feeding an indoor grow tent in soil during the vegetative phase. Future episodes will dive into more detail about various aspects of feeding your plants, including how to identify certain nutrient toxicities or deficiencies, identifying nutrient lockout, and adding supplements and additives, and more. As always, this information is for medical educational purposes. I am not diagnosing or treating any condition you may have, and please know and comply with all applicable laws wherever you may live. And if you're new here, welcome. It would really help the channel if you click like, smash that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content, including our coverage of Spanibus from Barcelona, Spain, which is coming up in just one week. Now, we're in the process of putting together a video answering some of the great questions you all have posted to us concerning your grow to date to tide you all over while I'm away. So as I mentioned in the introduction, there are 17 essential elements necessary for plant growth. In addition to the main three of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, there are 14 essential inorganic nutrients required to sustain plant life. These can be broadly segregated into macronutrients, which are elements that are needed in larger amounts than the others, and micronutrients, which are of course needed in lesser amounts. An element is essential if it is required for normal growth and reproduction, cannot be replaced by another element, and can be shown to be part of a molecule clearly essential to the plant structure or metabolism. The essential macronutrients absorbed from soil are nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, and sulfur. The essential micronutrients pulled from the soil are iron, boron, chlorine, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum, and nickel. Plants use these elements in differing amounts and forms, some as cations, or positively charged particles, and others as anions, or negatively charged particles, Almost all elements are used in a variety of ways, such as catalysts for enzymatic reactions, either as part of the enzyme structure or as regulators or activators, as regulators of the movement of water in or out of the cell and maintenance of turgor pressure, as regulators of membrane permeability, as structural components of the cell, or as receptors for the electron transport system, or as buffers which maintain the pH within cells. So the takeaway message here is that these essential elements, whether needed in a large amount, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, or in trace amounts, like copper and nickel, are all needed in a specific way to enable our plants to survive, thrive, and produce tasty buds. So how do we provide our plants with these elemental dietary needs? Well, this can be done in a variety of ways. 
We've already reviewed how in this series that I am only showing one way out of many to grow our plants, and that is to grow plants in soil with a liquid fertilizer system. However, there are other options available. Many people have had great success using living soil, which is where fungi, bacteria, protozoa, nematodes, arthropods, and earthworms are used to break down organic matter, thereby producing nutrients for the plants to use. In living soil, the gardener's focus is on maintaining the healthy ecosystem and the ecosystem itself provides for the plant. Another method is to use soil in which some of these organisms are absent, such as the earthworms, and to supplement this environment with a fertilizer, such as I have chosen to do. This could be in the form of a dry granular fertilizer, which has a time-released long-term nutrient supply, or through the use of a liquid nutrient line that provides a more immediate and therefore more precise application at a certain time for the plant. These can be organic or synthetic, depending on your preferences. Finally, you can provide these nutrients to your plant in a hydroponic system or through deep water culture in which there is actually no soil and liquid nutrients are provided in the water which bathe the roots to provide everything the plant needs. So when trying to choose the best approach, many factors can come into play. Hydroponics generally provides the most precise control of what nutrients are being supplied to your plant, but hydroponic setups are more expensive and require more specific knowledge and a more intensive maintenance than soil-based options. Living soil provides an organic, all-natural approach to cultivation, but in my opinion, again, requires a more comprehensive knowledge base to keep everything in balance and, well, there are the worms. Not a huge fan of the worms. So the Goldilocks option for me is to use soil with a fertilizer, and I chose to use a liquid fertilizer regimen as this provides a higher degree of control over what my plants are getting, meaning I can change things depending on whether I see signs of nutrient deficiencies, nutrient lockout, or another complication, while at the same time being relatively less intensive to follow, as most companies provide schedules basically recipes for feeding your plants on a weekly basis. I also chose soil over cocoa as I felt it was more natural and the soil does contain some nutrients, mycorrhizae and bacteria in it, but I am a proponent of always striving to learn more and grow my skills at, well, growing. So look for some upcoming content examining the use of cocoa as a substrate medium. Finally, granular time-release fertilizers are the most hands-off option and they can be great for a new grower looking to plant a seed and just water it. But the trade-off is, since it is a timed release, once you mix it into the soil, plant your seed and begin watering, you no longer have control over what is being provided to your plants. So again, the take-home message is that, for me, I have chosen to use a liquid fertilizer regimen in soil as the best compromise between ease of use and better control over what is being provided to my plants. Next, let's take a look at the products I use. So that wraps up this first portion re-edit of our video on plant nutrition. If you enjoyed this content, please click like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and consider supporting us on Patreon, link in the description below. So that's it for now, and until I see you again, puff puff and pass it on.